Oh, liberal hell. Ah, man, I'm on it today. There's, there's no mistakes. Hey. Every, everything's... Well, don't jinx yourself. Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, I have a whole beer over here that We've has yet to be knocked over onto everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One slip of the elbow, man, and this thing is just... Our whole night is over, basically. <laughs> like, well, if you guys like this episode, I know we've just started, but uh, we have cleanups to do. Actually, the show must go wrong. We would probably... We'd leave it and be we'll like, you know it. what? Yeah. Let's clean it up later. <laughs> you guys are wondering why there's Lake Valdezi on the fucking desk over here. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's the old that red beer go. catastrophe of 2022. Oh, God. Um. Anyways, yeah, what's up, man? Oh, uh, you were know. Are you ready for this? <laughs> no. I don't even. Okay, that's right. We're doing the we're doing the old JP. I was like, I don't oh, even yeah. know what we're watching. Good and old then JP, it, it bro. Down. Okay, let's go. Let's get into it. <laughs> Lights, camera, action. 307 reaction. Whoa! Wow. All right, Matt, Chris, it you guys, bars, I, that, it was just it was coming out. I didn't. Well, all right, uh, disassociation reaction. Anyways, uh, on the screen in front of us, we have um, the simple reason you must embrace your dark side with Jordan Peterson. Now, if you guys don't, if you guys don't know, we released a Jordan Peterson video what like two weeks ago now, when this video yep. drops, right? Yep. Um, and he talked about the simple act of learning how to stop caring. Yeah, you know, like by by uh, basically living being, in truth, being honest, yeah. yeah, being truthful and being honest, and uh, through that, it it helps enable you to not worry about you know consequences yeah. and things like that because you catch yourself from the outcome. So if you guys haven't seen that, it's on our page. Um, yeah. I am meaning to make a Jordan uh, Peterson playlist on our page. So if it hasn't been made, yep. it's in our miscellaneous playlist. You can go to search mm. and just type in Jordan Peterson. It'll pop right up. Yeah. Um, I have. I don't know. I have you. You haven't seen any of this one yet. Do you know anything I, about this one? I have a feeling this is one of the more famous one that circulates on Instagram. Okay. And I'm sure what circulates on Instagram is only a 30-second snippet from this eight-minute clip. Sure, yeah, yeah, I yeah. have not seen the whole eight-minute clip. Okay. Um, but but I imagine it's... If it's anything it's like the last one we watched, so. it's going to be some very profound... It's going to be good. Like, very eye-opening, kind of, yeah. like, thought-provoking statements, which we love on this channel, so... Which, as the structure are... fails, they said he's a local, okay? Oh, right. really? So I don't know oh. if they live in the same town, but I know he's Canadian as well. Gotcha. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, if you guys are uh, if you guys are on board and you're as interested in this as we are, go ahead and hit that, uh, that subscribe button down yes. at the bottom of the page. It literally does everything for us. It pays us. Yeah. It gets us in the algorithm. It helps you guys out. It helps get it on different social yes. media. It does all of that stuff, so... And it's all, that's all you got to do. Do. Just click that, and then if you want to go further, write yeah. us a comment. Hit the yeah. like button. Do that whole thing. You know, yeah. the whole there's a bell down there. You can set it to notifications. We won't take over your feed. We only release yeah. one video a day, so yep. you just get this nice little. Oh, look it! They released another video. Look at that! Look at that! Just one one a day, just to keep you you know yep. keep you entertained. That's it. With that, shall we? Let's go. Let's let's hear it. Part of the reason that people go watch anti-heroes and villains is because there's a part of them crying out for the incorporation of the monster within them, which is what gives them strength of character and self-respect. It's impossible to respect yourself until you grow teeth. And if you grow teeth, then you realize that you're somewhat dangerous and or maybe somewhat seriously dangerous huh. and then you might be more willing to demand that you treat yourself with respect and other people do the same thing and so that doesn't mean that being cruel is better than not being cruel what it means is that being able to be cruel and then not being cruel is better than not being able to be cruel because in the first case you're nothing but weak and naive and in the second case you're dangerous but you have it under control huh. and you yeah. know a lot of martial arts concentrate trade on exactly that as part of their philosophy of training. It's like, we're not training you to fight. We're training you to be peaceful and awake and avoid fights. But if you happen to have to get in one, and, and I guess the philosophy also is, is that if you're competent at fighting, that actually decreases the probability that you're going to have to fight because when someone pushes you, you'll be able to respond with confidence and with any luck, and this is certainly the case with bullies, with any luck, a reasonable show of confidence, which is very much equivalent to a show of dominance, is going to be enough to make the bully back off. And so- Man, I haven't we talked about that before yeah. on the channel about, about like standing up to your bully and just yeah. like, how, how most bullies are more bark than bite and that, oh, yeah. that kind of a thing. Like, oh, wow, that's sure. that's kind of crazy, man. And it, it, but it makes sense. Like, yeah. it, it totally makes sense. Um, uh, I like the uh, I like the the thing about like you know if if you're able to control your aim, you know that you can be 
out of control and yeah. crazy. Uh, and like you can be dangerous, but you know also know how to control it, and that that mm. provides confidence and things like. I'm like, dude, that yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's all logical. It makes sense. Yeah. It's just it's it's spoken in such a way that kind of like mm. brings it to light the meaning of it, and you're like, yeah. wow, man, that is kind of crazy, you know? Yeah, for sure. The fact that I, you know, I think that's why uh, Chuck Norris has become such a meme. Okay, <laughs> you know, like in all of his movies and stuff, he was. I don't want to have to roundhouse you, but, you know, you make me get out of my silver Dodge and I will. Okay? <laughs> right. Like, exactly. You know? Exactly. <laughs> like, and isn't like, isn't that the thing? Now, I don't know anything about the, uh, about martial arts or anything like that, but isn't it, isn't it mostly based in like defense? It's not necessarily like attacking. It's mostly like, yeah. like being ready for what's going to happen and being yeah. able to, like he said, being able to counter it yeah. and basic and, and shut down whatever's, whatever's it, it, happening. As far as I know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, now I could be wrong. I don't know. I've just, I, that, it seems that, like that kind of a thing to me i know literally nothing about that kind of stuff i've never studied yeah. martial arts i've never taken a karate class i have no idea <laughs> I, have no I, idea. I mean it's been said a lot in sports and even in the military the best offense is a, good a defense. really good defense yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. so you, you so, would think that the same philosophy yeah. applies there so yeah. let's go back what 10 seconds sure okay be the case with bullies with any luck a reasonable show of confidence which is very much equivalent to a show of dominance is going to be enough to make the bully back off and so the strength that you develop in your monstrousness is actually the best guarantee of peace. And that's partly why Jung believed that it was necessary for people to integrate their shadow. And he said that was a terrible thing for people to attempt because the human shadow, which is all those things about yourself that you don't want to realize, reaches all the way to hell. And what he meant by that was it's through an analysis of your own shadow that you can come to understand why other people are capable, and you as well, of the sorts of terrible atrocities that characterized, let's say, the 20th century. And without that understanding, there's no possibility of bringing it under control. When you study Nazi Germany, for example, or you study mm. the Soviet Union, particularly under Stalin, and you're asking yourself, well, what are these perpetrators like? Forget about the victims. Let's talk about the perpetrators. The answer is, they're just like you. And if you don't know that, that just means that you don't know anything about people, including <laughs> yourself. And wow. then it also means that you have to discover why they're just like you. And believe me, that's no picnic. So that's wow. enough to traumatize people, and that's partly why they don't do it. And it's also partly why the path to enlightenment and wisdom is seldom trod upon, because if it was all a matter of following your bliss and doing what made you happy, then everyone in the world would be a paragon of wisdom. But it's not that at all. It's, the, it's a matter of facing the thing you least want to face. Hmm. There's this old story in King Arthur where the knights go off to look for the Holy Grail which is either the cup that Christ drank out of at the Last Supper or the cup into which the blood that gushed from his side was poured when he was crucified. The stories vary, but it's, it's basically a holy object like the phoenix in some sense that's representation, a representation of transformation. It's an ideal, and so King Arthur's knights who sit at a round table because they're all roughly equal go off to find the most valuable thing. And where do you look for the most valuable thing when you don't know where it is? Well, each of the knights looks at the forest surrounding the castle and enters the forest at the point that looks darkest to him. And that's a good thing to understand because hmm. the gateway hmm. to wisdom and the gateway to the development of personality, which is exactly the same thing, is precisely through the portal that you do not want to climb through. And the reason for that is actually quite technical. This is a Jungian presupposition too, is that well, there's a bunch of things about you that are underdeveloped and a lot of those things are because there's things you've avoided looking at because you don't want to look at them and there's parts of you you've avoided developing because it's hard for you to develop those parts. And so it's, it's by virtual necessity that what you need is where you don't want to look because that's where you've kept it. And that's why there's, you know, an idiosyncratic element of it for everyone. Your particular place of enlightenment and terror is not going to be the same as yours, except that they're both places of enlightenment and terror. So they're equivalent at one level of analysis and, and different at another. So anyways, back to fiction and what it does. Wow, I that's uh, that is amazing. God, dude, I'm I'm sitting here trying to put myself in the place of one of his students, or like, yeah. or like someone in this lecture hall, yeah. and like having to take notes and stuff, and just, I I'm like I would be lost, I, dude. Like I I'm so. Oh, if I had a test on this, I I I would maybe pass just simply off the fact of when he speaks, like like here's the thing, Kenna has 
ADHD, something bad. She can't focus on a video for more than two seconds. I showed her one of his videos in the truck, and I was amazed. For ten minutes, she was just glued, <laughs> just hooked. It, like Jordan has such a way of capturing his audience. He's not, I, he doesn't have a you know crazy sounding voice. You know, he doesn't have this low radio uh -uh. quality no, no, no. voice. No. He, it's not that he's like you know this big strapping, good looking guy. You know what I mean? It's it's just he's so smart and he's so well thought and is it? He's a like, philosopher, isn't he? Or uh, is he's a psychiatrist? Psychiatrist. Okay. Okay, yeah, uh, so, I mean... But, yeah, I mean... He, analysis of the human brain and the human condition and things like yeah. that, like... He's a smart man, because it takes he's a lot crazy, to understand man. that kind of stuff, for oh, sure. For and real. the way he speaks is so philosophical mm -hmm. in the way that he speaks that, yeah, like, it, it, it pulls you in, because mm -hmm. he can give examples of the things that he's talking about in yeah. real-life situations as yeah. he's talking about them. And I love that. But the problem is, is that I, I like that so much that I don't take notes. I just sit there and listen. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you're telling a profound story right now. And I'm, I just, oh, wanna, I'd I have just, a hell of a time in that it'd class. It'd be so dude. tough, dude. Cause <laughs> like, I'm like, and then, and then he's like, okay, we'll have a quiz on it at the end of the week or whatever. And I look down and I've got like the header nothing. on my paper and that's like <laughs> it. And I'm like, shit. I mean, I feel like I learned a lot. I just don't have anything Am to I gonna remember represent all this? that. Yeah. yeah. So like, I, I, uh, he's obviously like a like a college professor or something like that. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure like a lecturer or something like that. He probably uh, speaks. Well, it. he he actually goes to uh, he travels around to different colleges okay. and does lectures. So he's and, like a lecturer. So yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, it is it's it's crazy, dude. Um, I no, it it, <laughs> it it blows me away. But it's something I've thought about before. Okay, so it, have you ever thought about putting yourself like you you hear about a. You hear a story, right, about, you know, that whatever, and you try to put yourself in that story. And I remember when I was in high school, uh, we were looking at Nazi Germany and, like, how the soldiers were selected and all mm -hmm. this crazy stuff, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting there putting myself in, okay, I'm a dude who lives in Germany. Maybe I work on cars, whatever, you know. Living my normal life, I get selected. Hey, you're gonna be in, you know, you're gonna be in the army. You're gonna be. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, what, what, what do you do? You know, like, like, like some what of you them, mean, you're talking about, like when the draft comes around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which some of them were drafted, most of them were volunteers. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, it's one of those things. If if someone comes to your, and it's hard to say what you're gonna do until that happens. But like. You have this guy in power that I don't think Germany really knew at the time what he was doing or what Hitler was capable of. But trying to put myself in the shoes of just the ordinary guy, the guy that's just like me, mm -hmm. and he gets selected and, like, it, he almost feels like he has no choice but to join. You know what I mean? And so there. Well, I mean, if if it's the draft, you yeah. literally don't have a choice. Like, yeah. you go to jail. You either go to jail yeah. or you go to war. Or like shot. You're, yeah, your call. Like, <laughs> like it, I mean – I, I mean, but it's it, it's crazy to try to, like, he says, you know, you look at Hitler and Stalin, and they're just like you. They, they're people. Yeah, they're just, just people. Just like. Yeah. Like, and, and that's crazy. Like, I, <laughs> I I know it's crazy, but it's not crazy. They're people like, that have had much different influences. It has influences, broken my mind over here, okay? <laughs> much different influences in their lives, for sure. But yeah. they are definitely at the end of the, at, at their core fundamental they're parts people. they're just people you know they, they, they got a brain man. they got lungs you know eyeballs yeah they're just just human beings i i was listening to uh one of his long form you know it was like a three hour thing right and he was talking about hitler and he said you know the the crazy thing about hitler is he was actually worse than what history portrays mm -hmm. okay there's a uh short on that too i think like oh, a, is there a little short yeah i think uh um, uh, I was looking through our page the other day, and it like yeah. recommended it to me. I, oh, okay. I, I only recall because go. it said something about Hitler wasn't as bad as as history says, or Hitler says. was worse, or something like worse that. Yeah, what whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But but he he was talking about all the mistakes that Hitler. He was like, you know, if Hitler wanted to build an empire, he would have made them slaves, not exterminated them. He's like, make, make and then you, yeah. when it starts to lose the war, he exterminated them more rapidly, like. He literally just out there to create carnage. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's crazy to think that he's flesh and bone and everything else. Just like, like it literally could have been anybody, but it was just that guy. You just know, what happened I mean? to be that guy. 
There's Man. probably a bunch of dudes that looked a lot like him, had similar upbringings and things yeah. like that, and like it just happened to be him. Yeah, it just know? happened to be it's him. A crazy, yeah, it is a crazy That's concept wild, to think dude. about for sure. Yeah, I think about the same kind of thing when I think about uh, we we talked about um, airline yeah. pilots, yeah. fucking uh, giant uh, crane operators in New York that are fucking working hundreds of stories up yeah. in these gi- enormous crane these these barge operators that are that yeah. are driving ships that are like a mile long or whatever it is through these canals that are like barely as big as the shit crazy like yeah. i don't th- those are just regular people too and i don't fucking understand that shit <laughs> watching these pilots walk through an airport and check their bags through the same security i'm checking mine through yeah. i'm like what yeah like, you're going to get on this thing and you're going to get on this sky bus and you're just going to pop it over the country real quick yep. land it on the other side okay I don't get it, you guys. I, I I never will. I don't I don't hey, I don't understand it. You know, and, and, and there's a flip side to this whole thing too. Like I, I know we're taking a long break here, but like we'll get back to We're halfway to it. through the video. We're taking an um, intermission, okay? Two things. Okay. <laughs> Number one, looking back or looking at the parts of yourself that you don't want to look at. And I believe we talked in we kinda talked a little bit about that in the uh whiskey don't cheat. Uh, with Jay Webb, where we were like, you know, you, you got to sit down and figure out for yourself who you are, what you want from life, like what your goals are, where your shortcomings are. And that's not easy, right? Because yeah. everybody would like to view themselves as, well, I'm in the right all the Everything's time. Everything's fine. You know, I'm, blah, 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 I'm good. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. it all taken care of. But uh, sitting down and really picking yourself apart is... Mm-hmm. It's rough. It's humiliating okay? for the most part. Let me tell you, when I was a kid, I had lots of practice. Okay, My dad would go, listen, you messed up. You go in my room and you sit on that bed and think about what you did, and I'll be in there after a bit. <laughs> I had a lot of those. I had a lot of those. Oh God! And the longer he, the longer he made you wait, I had a the lot. worse it was. Oh yeah, <laughs> like... crying my bo- crying my balls off on my up oh, in my yeah. room on my bed or whatever, just waiting, just waiting to hear like hear someone coming up the stairs. Yeah. Like oh fuck, uh, here I'm we dead. go. I'm gonna die. Yeah. I'm dead now. Um, but then the second thing, as far as uh, talking about, you know, some people will like people are people and they're capable of either good things or bad things, and that's the thing, literally. Anybody could have been Hitler, but then again, anybody could have been, you know, the a, a firefighter, a policeman who saved a whole bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Like I, I mean, mm-hmm. like again, like I said, I, I consider, I, I know, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm telling. By the this way, a lot. you know what's fucked up? Why can't I think of a name of somebody who saved somebody? How come we always just the most recognizable names are the people who did all the horrible shit? Oh, because they're the ones that get you. That I have a perfect answer for that. So when you're watching the news, <laughs> you never hear about how many no. successful flights there are. Oh, no. You no, no, only no. hear about the terrible, tragic ones that fall to the ground. You yeah. never hear, oh, today there were 14,000 successful flights across the country. Yeah. You hear, there was one flight and it fucking... And, bah, and, yeah. and media and banners. That's that's yeah. why. That's, that's why you fair. only hear about the that's bad fair. people. Because I, this guy stabbed him yeah. and he had it. And then he ran down the... He could have been John Wayne. Okay? Uh, you could be John... Anybody could be John Wayne. Okay? That's who John Wayne was. Was just John Wayne at one point. Right. You know what I mean? So, all right. Let's keep going. Yeah. It does. It, it distills truth. And it produces characters that are composites. And the more they become composites, the more they approximate a mythological character. And so they become more and more universally true and more and more approximating religious deities. But the problem with that is they become more and more distant from individual experience. And so with literature, there's this very tight line where you need to make the character more than merely human, but not so much of a god that, you know, one of the things that happened to Superman in the 1980s, Superman started out, he's got a heavenly set of parents, but by the way, and an earthly set of parents, and he's an orphan like Harry Potter, very common theme, is that when Superman first emerged, he could only jump over buildings, you know, and maybe he could stop a locomotive, but by the time the 1980s rolled around, like he could juggle planets and, you know, (laughs) swallow (laughs) hydrogen bombs and, you know, he could do anything. Well, people stopped buying the Superman comics because how interesting is that? It's like yeah. something horrible happens and Superman deals with it. And something else horrible happens and Superman deals with it. And <laughs> it's like, that's dull. He turned into such an archetype. He was basically the omniscient, omnipresent, 
omnipotent God, and that's no fun. It's like God wins, and then God wins again, yeah. and then again, God wins, and you know. So then they had to weaken him in different ways with kryptonite, you know. So green kryptonite kind of made him sick, and red kryptonite, I think, kind of mutated him, if I remember correctly. And anyways, they had to introduce flaws into his character so that mm. there could be some damn plot. <laughs> and that's something to think about, you know. There's a deep existential lesson in that your being is limited and flawed and fragile. You're like mm. the genie, which is genius in the little tiny lamp, you know, this immense potential, but constrained in this tiny little living space, as Robin Williams said when he played the genie yeah. in Aladdin. But the fact that you have limitations means that the plot of your life is the overcoming of those limitations. And that if you didn't have limitations, well, there wouldn't be a plot and maybe there would be no life. And so wow. that's part of the reason why perhaps you have to accept the fact that you're flawed and insufficient and, mm. and live with it and consider it a precondition for being. It's a reasonable idea. So anyways, one of the main- That's good. A precondition for being. Yeah. Is just existing. Yeah. And, and and not being perfect. Yeah. A precondition for existing. I fucking love that. Yeah. That is my next album title. I swear to God, <laughs> you hear you heard it here first. <laughs> precondition for existence. That is perfect. Yeah. Uh that's such a good way to like encapsulate the entire thing that what he's talking about. Like it's it that's just like having these things and like mm. pursuing pursuing what betterment for yourself. Yeah. Uh, based on you know I, Im imperfections like yeah, identifying your flaws and man you know like it's so much so much wow. he's saying so much there's here, a lot to swallow here it's just minutes. yeah he like, just keeps going shit. and going i'm like god damn yeah. it's just it's wild he he nails it on everything he I, says here, man. It, i i I want to hear that one more time. Okay, let's okay. do it. Is the overcoming of those limitations and that if you didn't have limitations, well, there wouldn't be a plot and maybe there would be no life. And so that's part of the reason why perhaps you have to accept the fact that you're flawed and insufficient and, and live with it and consider it a precondition for being. It's a reasonable idea. So anyways, wow. one of the main characters is the country, the known, the explored territory. We went over that a bit and it always has two elements. I mean, your country is your greatest friend and your worst enemy, you know, because it squashes you into conformity and demands that you act in a certain manner and mm. reduces your individuality to that element that's tolerated by everyone else. Big it facts. constrains mm. your potential in a single direction. And so it's really tyrannical, but at the same time, it provides you with a place to be and all of the benefits that have accrued as a result of the actions of your ancestors and all mm. the other people that you're associated with. So there's the good tyrant or the bad tyrant and the good king and those are archetypal figures and that's because they're always true and they're always true simultaneously you know which is mm. partly why i object to the notion of the patriarchy because it's the apprehension of a mythological trope which is that of the evil tyrant without any appreciation for the fact that the archetype actually has two parts and the other part is the wise king and you can tell an evil tyrant story about culture no problem but it's one-sided and and that's very dangerous because you don't want to forget all the good things that you have while you're criticizing all the ways that things are in error. That's a lack of gratitude and it's a lack of wisdom. It's founded in resentment. Jeez. It's very dangerous, both personally and socially. Wow. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and just throw another uh, 10 pounds wait, in the sack right at the end, like, man. Wow, man. I, wow. I, uh, what? Yeah. What? Like, oh man! I, I love that he he wraps up the whole evil villain thing. He's like, he's like, you can have an evil villain that's a complete tyrant, and, oh. and he's just he's just evil all the time. But that's dangerous yeah. because then he becomes this existential, non-relevant thing, and he becomes like like you were saying, he becomes some, some sort of deity or some sort of mm -hmm. god, and and that's not it's not relevant people need to know they need some sort of connection so they give him these well, flaws that, these that's weaknesses. what he was saying that's why people identify with villains is because they know they're capable of great things and they kind of watch them lose their grasp or lose their control of it, it, their, yeah. their chaos and right? it's a good way for for them personally to like yeah. seek out that that feeling inside mm -hmm. of them and kind of get a, a relative you know base yeah. for it without actually having to lose control themselves that, right, that kind right. of that kind of that's Man, that oh man, right there at the end though, that that was that was crazy talking about 
you know, your your country is yeah. your enemy and your friend. Like I was wondering, I was like, man. how is my country my enemy and my friend? And then he talked about, he started talking about you're constrained to your country. And I'm like, yeah. I guess you're kind of right. They, you know, they I mean, wanna, they, not, I mean, I, you know, I can go get my passport and I can go fly to a different country and this, that, and the other. But even then, if I go get my passport and fly to another country, then I'm constrained to that country as well. Like you're always well, constrained. Yeah, to you're, you're are, always right? constrained to a set of laws, is what he's yeah, referring yeah, to, right? Exactly. So yep. he's talking about they they beat you down to con- to make you conform to what's socially acceptable. Hence the reason so many people get deplatformed on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Um, you know, shadow banned on TikTok. <laughs> uh, but like that, that stuff happens because they go, oh, we're, you know, we don't like that. <laughs> right. But it suppresses individuality, which individuality, when let run free, okay, can be completely chaotic. It can be. Okay. So, you ever so been to Burning to, Man? So, <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> so there has to be a balance, right? So, like, the, the shitty thing is, and I think the point he's kind of getting at here at the end, which I don't think necessarily fits with the rest of it. I think he was shifting subjects, and then that would maybe be a else, separate yeah. video. But, uh, you know, there there's, there's things that you're not going to agree with that are either in law or, um, you know, maybe not necessarily a law, but people go, oh, well, that's socially unacceptable. And you go, well, I don't see a problem with that, blah, blah, blah. There's always going to be those things, but then you also have to look at the things you are free to do, right? Well, I can leave whenever I want to. I can, I can travel. I'm free I to can travel anywhere. You go know? on the mountain. I can quit my job tomorrow and live off the land. I can, you know, I have all of these opportunities Definitely. to get a better job, you know, do whatever. Sure. You I don't... change your life in a matter of 24 hours. Yeah. And you have the freedom to do that. Yeah. Like, change your life however you want to. Yeah. So, like, I. <laughs> Nobody's ever going to be 100% happy with their country, ever, because yeah. it, you can't please everybody. Yep. I mean, Same thing know, with art. Nobody's ever going to make the perfect album. No one's ever yeah. going to make the perfect painting yeah. because you're never going to please everyone. Someone's always yeah. going to have an issue with something, right? Yep. That's just how – that's how – you're never going to make the perfect reaction video. Nope. Someone's never always going to have, have a problem with the way you do a reaction video. Let, I don't think we've let ever me tell you. one. <laughs> let uh, me tell you. 600 and counting. Let's go. <laughs> Oh man! Well, if you guys like this was, video as much as we did, what do you even say after that? Like he's oh five out of five yeah, backwards hats. That's all I can say. Yeah, that's say. it, like, man. That's, that's <laughs> we, we've said enough. Let's get out of here. <laughs> if you guys like this video, leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, click the bell, become part of the notification, notification gang. gang, and with that, we'll see you guys next time. Ow! Oh, almost lost my headphones. <laughs> uh. Something's happening. Something's happening. Okay, everything's fine.